Okay, so next up we're gonna work on the engines. Now the engines themselves on the sprue, just be aware this big block down in here is for a different version. So we're not using those at all. We are using the shorter ones, as you can see sort of down below. The big thing is, when you go through the instructions, it does make quite sense. And also don't worry about it too much as well, because it says here about uh, obviously E6 uh, and E7 and things like that. And as it goes through, you'll see over here for the outer ones, it's got uh, 3P and then uh, down in here, 3S on E13, E12. The great thing is very good people on here have actually marked them. So it's actually got it written in there. So that's 4S, okay. And then just down in here, we've got four, we need glasses to be able to see them but that's three and then obviously there we go we got 4p and then we've got uh, 3p so obviously for these down in here it's talking about port and starboard sides of these so the big thing to remember is this little guy here this is this one which is a little retaining collar which is just to help you with alignment is it any good yeah i don't know okay but there we go so that's going to come in and do this so we've already cleaned up all the parts first all right so we've just got the final bits to take care of which is to literally snip off these two apart okay and then we're just going to come along and clean up now it's important not to take this little nodule out here on the sides because we need that because that's part of the lineup okay so we just do that side and then we just come over that's fine and with this one which side is it there it is okay and we can just polish those up okay that's good to go so what we've got is three and four how these are going to go down in here and again you just want to make sure that they are cleaned up underneath okay because you don't want anything to be fouling them like there We've got a tiny little bit on the bottom. It's important that those are cleaned out properly because it's gonna sit in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, take a little bit of glue, and this is on the three side. So we'll put a little bit of glue down the bottom. And we're just gonna slide that in. So what it does, it butts up to the back. So there is an overhang and it sits in the front just like that okay so then again we'll do the same on the other side this is the four that ejector pin that you can see in there it's not an issue it's so we don't have to worry about that at all but is that one cleaned off i'm just going to make sure these are totally out of the way these ones on the bottom okay and then again i'm just going to slide these in and again we want these to butt up very nicely into the back we don't want them overhanging or going in okay and then this collar sits on the back like this and basically it's just to help you with alignment but i'll be honest with you you might as well not bother okay so with these ones down in here what we'll do is we'll start with uh, we've got 3p which is for the port side and to be honest you can tell if you notice it's got a light scoop on the bottom just down in here and then that is going to fit down onto this side so what we do we'll come in we'll glue just down on that bit down on there and then what we'll do is we'll stand this into position and you want a nice positive seam now the reason it's giving you this bit is so you can line it up at the back okay so it is all totally lined up all right so that's one's on there so this is we're on the three side okay and then we can just come along with this little guy that one's going to fit in and again we need it to perfectly line up at the back so again if it's right at the front it should be right at the back okay the only thing i have noticed with these is these obviously at the top make sure we get a bit of filler in here because this gap i'm not a fan of it okay so then just to check just come up with this push this in and again you want it all to be straight on the outside that's the key to this one okay so that's one side done and then we'll just come in and do the other Again, we've got the port and the starboard sides. Remember which way around they go. Here we go, it's that way. Draw with extra thin, you got to be quick. Do 
glue the pin there. Again, we'll just make sure we're all sitting nicely. And again, with a little bit of work time on this, so it's not a massive problem. So a bit more glue. And then this little guy is going to come in here. And then obviously we want the fronts to line up. And the backs. So that's in there. A little bit of glue on there. And then we'll just double check. Pop this guy and give it a nudge. We can just pinch. And there we go. So now you can see these little tiny bits of gap just here at the back at the top so what I'm just going to use is a tiny little bit of styrene filler okay just to weld those up because we want it to be perfect because obviously it's an engine area like that the side ones to be honest I'm not worried about but that's those done just like that okay so the other thing to do is just down in here you've got little notches there's a little notch down in there and one in there. This is one of the few times I drill and cut because that way you get a nice curved edge. So we're just going to come in one mil drill bit. And we're just going to push into here. Okay, and on the other one. So we just go literally up to the edge. Okay. Here we go, just like that. Then we can just use our knife to follow in. So we just use the guide on this side. And on this side. Those up. Okay, so that's the two little notches out down on there. And then these ones going in, but we're going to paint all of these metal. So I'm not worried about it. That's a straightforward push bit in there. And we're just going to come in with our edges, but you just notice all the parts are numbered. So you know exactly which one you're working with. So that one all goes in there. Then we give it a nudge forward just to make sure it's all butting up. A little bit of glue just on the front. Okay, and that's done as well. So then obviously these will come along from the top half and will go in there like this. Okay, but obviously we've got this little bit of filler and everything else to take care of in there, which we've just dropped down. Hopefully that'll be okay. But we've already done one on the other side. It's got a little bit of filler on it. We'll get them sanded. Now the point of doing those is, they then come along under here, as you can see. And then what happens is, is that from my underside down in here, these are literally quite a nice fit. There is a little bit of a gap down in there, but you can see how nice a fit that is. Okay, we're actually going to glue this in place because I'm going to get the filler out and we're going to go in and we're going to take care of those. But to be honest, seam wise, that's really very, very nice. There's not too much going on down in there, but we have got a little bit of a gap. Okay, we we'll just do the edge as it joins. A little bit of a nudge, but we have got that gap down in there. So what we're going to do, come out with our filler. We're just going to pop a little bit just down in here. And we're just going to walk this along. And then we'll just come back and we'll sand and we'll blend. So the good thing about this, it will self level. So it should hardly need any work at all. Just a little bit of cleanup. You can see we've got to just do the other side as well. But we'll leave this on its back so it can self level itself along okay just a little bit more just in there and there we go that's those done in there like that 
Okay, and again, you can see how we've sanded and blended in this rear area. We've also rescribed it. We've got some dust in there. You can see all the details in the back part. And then there's that tail part is actually on here now, just like that. Okay, so the tail's in there looking very, very nice. Last up is the little intake ramp we've put in. The reason we're doing this one now is purely because uh, I need it to dry off a long time. So we've got the little intake ramp just down in here. And then this one comes in, and as I say, it's a little bit of a jigsaw, the way that this one goes in. So it's teethed, so as you notice, it's got a tooth at the bottom. Hold on, get it in camera, there we go, it's in there. And you give it a little bit of a nudge, but there is a little bit of a gap. Now this is one of those things, if you play with it a little bit, you can actually get it a nicer fit. There we go, that's a nicer, nicer fit. See, there we go, that's in there now, and is at the top. I'm running round and then on the underside as you can see looking very nice as well so what we can do we can glue this in because we will need to take care of just the slightly on the inside so good bit of capillary action going on down in there because as you say we've got this step just down in here and we need to take care of that so again we're in with a little bit more filler because we'll just give that a small little bit of blending work just to take care of that. And again, we're just going to put a little bit just down in here just to make sure all of that does blend nicely. And we're just going to put a little bit just down in here because I'd rather this was in and we can sand and take care of it, which is, to be honest, what we've done on the other side as well, just to make sure it is seamless. Because again, these are all areas you're gonna look at, okay? If anyone says, oh, I don't look at that bit. When you're a modeler, you will know where the faults are and where there's little seam lines and joins. And the first thing you'll do when you're looking at other people's is look at that area. Great tip. So if you know it's there, they'll know it's there too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more. Okay, and just a little bit around there. Okay, so that's those done, that's that in. To say, the engines, once that's dry and, and it's done, what we'll do is obviously we'll come back and we'll put that somewhere to dry, there we go. Uh, then what we'll do, we'll come back and we'll fit them because you can see down in here, it's talking about obviously fitting in these areas, putting them in and everything else, which we've sort of done. And then in a minute, we've got the little strakes which go down in the intake bits and everything else down on the bottom. And as everything's drying, we can do all of those versions of all of these down in there. That'll complete off the back. Then we can get going with the tail. So we can get the tail on and the rudder fitted and all these areas you can see down in here, which is really, really nice. Then it's in control surfaces. So if you've got a bit of time at the moment, you can actually pop the control surfaces together mate then you can do clean up and everything and then we can install them on there so we've got the sort of flaps and the ailerons going down in there and then we're into gear and all the rest of it but when we're into gear and by that time we'll be in a position where we actually get this into primer we can check it all over make sure we're happy with it and we'll be ready really to start moving on with it but generally so far it's coming along very very nicely right okay so we're pushing on really nicely the engines yeah, you can see just down in here, looking very nice indeed. Uh, it's all coming together very, very nicely. And again, we had to do a little bit of cleanup work, as we said before. So we've polished out now, sanded and polished out, and we popped the uh, little panel lines back in those nozzles. But they are pretty good. And to be honest with you, when you fit these in, I've got the right way around because they, is, they are keyed. Okay, they're going to come in and as you can see, it's not actually a bad join. There is a slight seam, but don't forget, this is going to be a separate colour. So if there's a bit of a panel line in there, that's not too much of a problem at all. So that's actually a very nice fit down in there. Unfortunately though, these wasn't so nice. So we've still got to sand and clean up down under here because technically it's gonna need a little bit of blending work to put those in. And obviously it's gonna be a light color underneath. So there's no way we can actually hide this one. So we will take care of that and we'll put those in. You can see these ones down the side now glued in really nicely. They're not gonna take too much at all. Speaking of that, obviously you might remember when we put these intakes uh, or fillets in here like this. Uh, you know, they had a little bit of glue, so you can see we got a little bit of a mark in there. So we sanded those out, still need to be polished in, and obviously this intake one, but to be honest, it's still a little bit soft. When we were coming in here to fix it and put these in, you can see they're pretty well blended underneath. 
but this side as well just needs a little bit more attention to put it in. Again, this is the thing with sanding is being patient. You can see there's a little bit of tearing just on that seam, just by my thumbnail. That's because it's still a little bit soft. And as we were sanding it and blending it in, it started to sort of tear. So again, you back off completely. And again, it's gonna take however long it takes. I thought, you know, basically, what, 18 hours, it'll be fine. No, it's gonna take a little bit more. And that's the secret to this, like we were saying, patience, patience, patience. So you might notice, uh, down in front of me, well he's probably slightly out of shot, at the top here you can see we've got various parts all done. So we've put the tail together, okay, and we've actually got the fin on the top. This is black, it's separate, but it'd be easier to paint this on than it will be afterwards, okay. Now this tail section, as you can see, has got these little blades underneath, and there was two little ones just underneath here. When we come to fix it to the tail, it's a fit and a half. It's really very, very tight to get this in, okay? Which in some ways is quite good, but it feels too tight. Now, obviously we've got a seam down in here, so it may be us, we've done it a little bit tight. I don't know if they're all like it or it's just mine. But what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of height and a little bit of uh, width out of these blades that fit down into these slots, because, you know, it, it really just needs a little bit. And I have already sanded it a bit, but it's still not perfect. And again, we want this to drop in and really finish it off. And then obviously we get something looking very much like a Vulcan with that installed. So that takes a little bit more work. We haven't put the rudder in yet, but we have glued it all together. Again, we'll come in with a deflect angle. You know me with control surfaces and things. I like to have them sort of deflected off a little bit just to make the aircraft look a little bit more as if it's powered down. Perhaps the wind's caught the actual the rudder in the wind. And the same with the control surfaces. Obviously, with the sort of flaps at the back, we're going to you know have them a little bit down, not fully, but obviously in the relaxed pose. And the same with the ailerons. Now, these ailerons on the ends of the wings here are absolutely fantastic because these are, I'll get the right ones around, they literally just come in, uh, which way you're around, there we go, and they click in. And they literally are a very nice fit. And again, you can sort of deflect and you can place them in here exactly how they go. And again, we've got one over here for the outside and they fit really very nicely and there's not even any glue in there. But again, we're gonna do those because they're something that could be knocked off. Same goes with the actual, the flaps. So these are just two halves that come together and then actually get put in. And again, I don't remember which way around these are. These will be on this side. Again, you've got the little notch, the little cutout, but again, they are really nice. Now, the only thing is, you can probably see it with the flap in here. We do have a slight sink mark running along here. If you catch it, you can see it's just in there. Now, again, this is one of those things with sink marks. There's two types of sink marks in this world. There's the one that actually looks a little bit like stress skin and we can get away with it. And there's the one that looks like an absolute sink mark. This one, I honestly think we could probably get away with it looking a little bit stressed. Okay, so sometimes I do leave them in and there is a deliberate thing to them. Yes, it'll be quite straightforward to pop a little bit of filler in here and take care of this, all right? It's on that borderline of when I will do it. It's quite noticeable, but this is because it's in plastic. When I get it into primer, I'll probably revisit this because at this point, these will be glued in place as well because it'll just be easier to put them in now, okay? And to see how noticeable it is. If it looks like a blatant sink mark, then obviously we will take care of it and I'll be right. That's get some Mr. Surfacer in there, probably a thicker Mr. Surfacer, like a 500, and we'll just blend it. It's on a flat, there's a simple panel line that we can go along and we can actually take care of it. It's not like it's hard work, but sometimes I think it just adds a little bit of normal detail. And I've seen it on various kits here where people make a big deal out of, oh, it's got a sink mark, it's got to go. Yeah, it also looks like a little bit of stress metal and they all have that area. And it's the type of area you might find it, leading edges of actually control surfaces, things like that. If it's gonna be under stress, it's gonna be in there. Okay, so in some ways we might leave it just in there. If not, it'll have to go. The ones on the underside, are a little bit more pronounced. You can probably see it down in there as well. But again, are you gonna see it? Are you gonna notice it? I don't know. It's a simple fix. Uh, and it's a little bit of an annoyance and really it's the only thing I didn't spot when I actually did the review of it But again, they're not like a deal breaker It's not like it's got a million riveting detail or raised detail all around it and it's gonna be a nightmare to do it It's pretty straightforward and we can take care of it just like that Whilst we're on the underside here, what we can start to do is get some of the covers in Okay, so as you imagine you can see on here we've done the engines we're not going to fit the engines on yet but certainly over here you can see these ones down in here so as you can see down in here we've got these ones so we've got one and two and then we've got 13 and 14 are going to fit down onto here 
okay so what we've actually got i've got them and we've cleaned these up already all right and to be honest you can't really go wrong with this because look they've even made great big slots for them to actually fit in all right so down in here uh, as we're looking at it just making sure we're all good around the right way okay so we've got uh, just double checking myself here making sure it's just because these look like these are the longer ones at the front which they are because they do fit in so we've got one and we've got two I think what they've done is on the instructions here we're facing back to front that's the thing with it so what we want to be doing is perhaps facing this round the other way uh, to do it so this technically is the front end and the aft end and things like that so I think that's what they're doing here but definitely they fit in here this way round all right so I think what they mean is it's like that that's how we're looking at it on the instructions all right so it's going to go around that way and we've got the two we've got 13 and we've got 14 are going to go to the rear so let me just check so 13 is to the inside which is this one here and we've got 14 which is going to go in here okay so again really really nice so what we can actually do is literally just we'll glue these in place so again we'll just come around and we'll let the capillary action do its bit and zip around all on the outside it's got a nice groove that they sit in and again using quick set glue is ideal for things like this because again you're not going to end up melting parts in so once it's got a little bit of a bite in there we we'll just add a little bit more glue and then we we'll just give a quick tap to make sure they are all seated nicely so that's those in and then to be honest we can just do these on this side as well and again I have got a little bit of a fingerprint as you notice just down in there I don't think the glue's bitten particularly well so what we do is we're just going to come up with a sander and we're just going to sand that out because we won't be able to get in there particularly well afterwards so I'm thinking it's probably easier just to blend this out now than it would be other times. There we go, so that's taking care of that. All right, so again, we can just probably come in here with this guy. There we go, that's better. Just to blend it out, otherwise it's gonna be a bit of a pain to get that seated in. Okay, one, and we can go with this one down in here. So let's just do these fronts. Taps, just to make sure the capillary action is running round and we've got these rear ones which are going to go one and two and again these are those things Leo it's all going to be painted in one so we might as well do it now just a little bit more on the sides and there we go that's all in position just like that okay so that's actually coming along very nicely as well okay so following on from that when you were down in here we got this piping system so we've got this piping going on and that's where we drilled out those holes and the little nicks at the back so again we've got those ones to go in we can put those in and then we've already made these up because these are in and ready to go as well we've got these little guys okay and then obviously these ones are just going to come along and they're going to flatten down and going to go straight in the middle and again we drilled out those holes for them as well so it'll just come in and as i say you'll find the hole is where they are but don't forget it will overhang slightly because we haven't got the engine in there yet so obviously with the engines in that would be okay but trust where your little hole is you can see we put the little hole just down in there it fits it will go in there again just needs a little bit of finish to find it and those will go in so if you wanted to you could get on and you could do that over here then it moves on so we've already done the tail that's all good we need to work that out a little bit and we've already done the flaperons and the ailerons down here at the back okay so that goes on and then it talks about obviously about getting into the gear and the various things okay and going through the motions of that and the bombay which we haven't got the blue steel missile so from what our point of view is we've got all of these parts done 
we can get all of those fitted down into here now and get these situated in and be happy with it all and we can actually think about for the first time getting it over and getting into some primer to see exactly what's going on with everything so again with those engines we've got to do a little bit of masking work to make them up but we've still got a little bit of sanding and blending to make that perfect we will work on that tail as well so we get this tail and we'll work out just thin it down a little bit and we'll get it all situated so it's a nice fit in there as well so we can get that glued in hopefully we won't get any seams on the sides or anything if we have we'll be back with the old filler and getting it in there again control surfaces i think once we've got them all sorted and they're all cleaned up ready to go in we can actually place those in there as well and get those all installed but again depends on really this back area with the sink mark if we're going to take care of it or not so i won't fit those just quite yet okay these ones are great because they're a soft fit so we'll put those in afterwards anyway the only other thing is speed brake so you're going to have it open or closed on the speed brake I think it looks really nice with them open, but you've got the point of view is that it wouldn't have them open if it was just stood on the ground. So yeah, it's a little bit of a thing with that one of seeing how it's going. But generally we are really seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with this one. It's really coming together now. So what we're hoping is to get all of this into this one, get it over to the spray bay. We can get some primer on it. We'll have a good look at it there, make sure there's nothing we want to take care of. And then obviously at that time as it's dry and we can work on things like the undercarriage and the various things and the blue steel missile, obviously we can start to get that together because when we're doing the white under side and things like that we might as well paint it all at the same time right okay so to be honest with you i haven't touched this for about a week i've been working on other projects but it's really nice to be back on the vulcan again so to finish up this part really it's just putting in the final little bits into this one so on the top here we've been in and we've rechecked and had a quick sand and everything else and as you can see we've got a little bit of gray paint around here because i've actually used gray uh down here in the copper area purely because it's going to be literally the black hole of Calcutta in there you're not going to see a thing all right so by making it hopefully a lighter color you might be able to pick out the odds yeah you're not going to see it let's face it so I'll do my trying to keep anyway we have done it and we've done a test fit with the glass work on there I know there's been a lot said about the the actual seats not fitting well mine do which is a bit odd because I wasn't expecting it to but I've just come along and we've popped this in and uh, the only thing I can think of is that perhaps you haven't got them seated down properly, uh, whichever way it is, but these do fit in here and they go in and it's uh, not a problem at all. That's actually a really good fit in there. And there is a seam that runs underneath all of this. I know a lot of people say about this seam. It is funny, uh, but it is literally, there's a slot that runs all the way around the actual front part of the canopy. The side of it should be smooth and all that is. So what we need to do is, is obviously get this masked up, which we'll do in a moment, in there same time on the front we put the pito in now you know sorry pito wrong one refueling probe uh in there the reason for doing that is is that i don't think you'll make a particularly nice job of putting it in afterwards uh, you're going to have glue there's going to be things so i'm thinking look we'll put it in there now because on this particular one we're doing it's black underneath it's going to be camo on the top so that way it should just all blend through very nicely to be honest it's a really nice fit as well can't really fault it at all this tail section which is in there now to be honest with you we did have a few little fit issues with it so we did come along with a little bit of mr surfacer down just eat down each side and then a little bit of thinners on there lack of thinners give it a wipe and it's fine now no problem at all so that's all down in there same goes with these intakes really happy of how the intakes are they're looking very much the part we'll get the camera to lock in don't look like it it's a bit close there we go they are done and in there now and again making sure we got all of these scenes looking pretty much as good as we can okay so last up is at the back you can see we've got the actual control surfaces down on this side so we're going to come down on the other one to be honest using contactia glue nice big thick glue the great thing about this is is that because it's thick it's got really good bite now technically looking at reference photos of these they seem to be in the up position even when powered down normally hydraulics when it bleeds off and there's no hydraulic pressure left in the aircraft when it's at idle and at rest uh, everything sags and droops but I've been looking at pictures of Vulcans and they don't seem to do that so I don't know if they've got internal locks into it or the system is that well pressurized that it doesn't leak you know you look at other aircraft certainly things like the vault corsair uh that and the crusaders and things like that over time they will really sag down if you look at a lot of russian stuff they really sag down things like that so some nations by their nature put them in the power down position when they finish the flight others they naturally let them bleed off what i've done here is i'm just going to put it down at a somewhat small angle 
just so it's got that sort of look. So there's a little bit of glue in there. We just give it a wiggle to sort of get it moving and alive. And they are a two-part flap. It's not just one big flap at the end here. So we've slightly offset the angle just to give it a little bit of movement. So we're just pulling it down a couple of literally like sort of five degrees and then perhaps a little bit more just on the outward one just so it's got that little bit of movement we don't want it to be fully deflected and as I say it's got all the the degrees it can move to down in there I didn't really want to have it hanging right down or it looks like it is in literally takeoff flaps and things like that we just want it at rest okay that way because it's a big flat area on the top of this it will have a more interesting look to it because there's nothing else really to see we are going to have the speed brakes up uh, you know and obviously we've got the ailerons going in on the outside we're going to put a small deflection as well with the rudder which can go in now as well purely because this can all be painted up together okay so all we're going to do is going to come in with the rudder it seats quite low and we're just going to lift it just up a little bit just so there's a small gap and then what we're going to do is I'm going to put a small deflection in the rudder as well and to be honest this is artistic license so down here on the back you can see it just slightly over a little bit I like to give it that look perhaps it's moving in the wind various things like it it's that thing it's very rare you see rudders straight you know there's normally things so I'm just trying to give a little bit of movement onto these last we've got over here we've actually got the uh, ailerons for the outside and again these I am going to leave as a soft fit for the moment you see it's got the little dash underneath those go to the bottom okay so they go in but what we can do with these is we can put one side up slightly so we're going to have this one maybe up a little bit and on the other side we might have them slightly down again so the control stick is slightly off to one side it's moved things like that as well so again when you're looking over it now instead of it just being one big giant surface you've now got little areas that are all broken up into that one so with those put basically in there now these can actually sit here temporarily if you wanted to the ailerons or you can fix them into place whichever way you want to do we can think about actually getting this into primer all right so we've got to do a little bit of masking first so we're going to come in we're obviously going to do the uh, canopy we'll get that masked up next then we're going to mask up these intakes so obviously they're done correctly and all the rest of it is in there underneath here obviously we're going to do a temporary job uh, of just masking the wheel wells and obviously at the front here we're going to put the door on temporarily closed so it looks like it's all ready to go so forth and so on the only thing we're not going to put on yet is these engines so the engine nozzles which come in the back here just like this which actually are a really nice fit into this they're not a problem at all but because they're a different color we'll paint them separately and they can go in afterwards so there we go that's one Vulcan for the first time looking like a full Vulcan now okay and by the time we get the canopy masked up and onto this one it will really start to take shape so then after that's going to be a straightforward job getting in there we're going to give it a coat of primer check everything if we're all happy with it then we're going to start so we'll start with the light underside going through the motions of doing that one the blue steel we'll do completely separate so don't worry about that because it's a different color but anyway we do the entire of the underside we'll get all of that one in and then obviously we'll then start on the camo on the top doing the two-tone camo talking about different ways to do it we can either go freehand but to be honest the Vulcan has a hard edge camo to it so we're going to use a mask set for that one we're going to make our own masks up to it put it down onto it and we'll go for it like that so if you look back at how we do things like splinter camos it's a similar type of thing then we're going to come in and do the individual areas so we'll pick out all the different points on this one as well for picking out all the details we've got the engines all painted in there and then we can really go about weathering it fading down that paintwork giving it a nice three-dimensional look so forth and so on Thank <laughs> you.